Hello guys and welcome back to another video. Recently I bought an IBM ThinkPad laptop off of eBay for $49 and that included shipping. And considering it arrived wrapped in an Aldi bag and I can feel the laptop from the outside, I've got very low hopes that it survived the shipping undamaged. Either way, I'm very excited to open it up and see what we got. So let's take a look. It always worries me seeing a laptop arrive with less than adequate packaging. Although the ThinkPad within is known for being very robust and should take a bit of a beating. And here we have the Lenovo R31 with a single layer of bubble wrap protecting it. Literally taped to the side we have the charger and everything seems to be going well so far. On the base is a test and tag sticker from 2015 and a label saying it was from a secondary college. The seller did mention that the DVD drive cover was missing but apparently it does still work. And opening up the laptop we get a good look at the absolutely filthy display panel. It looks like some school students thought this was a touchscreen, and no one ever cleaned it. Honestly it's a bit dirty but I've definitely seen worse. So let's power it on and see if everything is working correctly. Pressing down the power button the laptop springs into life and shortly thereafter Windows 10 finally loads. And after looking in the settings, hang on, this isn't the processor the seller said this had. The seller listed it as having a 2.2 GHz T7500 Intel CPU. Instead, it's running a far weaker 1.8 GHz T7100. The seller also said the battery life wasn't great, but I didn't think that meant it didn't work at all. Long story short, I tried negotiating a partial refund, but eBay didn't even give me the option. The seller never replied, so I ended up chasing the money through PayPal. It turns out I'm not the first person the seller scammed in nearly the exact same way. They bought a very similar laptop and also got no response from the seller. You've got to love how I wasn't even eligible for eBay's money back guarantee and that the seller was a con artist. Nice. Now that we've got it out of the box, I think we should give it a good clean with a healthy dose of eucalyptus oil. If I'd known this was going to come with an entry level 1.8 GHz processor, I would have bought a CPU upgrade for this video. But I simply don't have the time now, so I'll have to see if I've got a compatible processor lying around in a drawer or something. And to get this large sticker off I applied a small amount of sticker remover. After letting it soak in for a few minutes it was fairly easy to peel off. And with a little help from some eucalyptus oil, the rest of the residue came right off. The screen, while dirty, doesn't appear to be damaged. I like that it has a matte surface that doesn't reflect much. It's a shame that it only has a resolution of 1280 by 800 though. As I always say, be sure to wipe down the keyboard and trackpad of any secondhand laptop you buy. You never know who or what has been touching the surface. A replacement battery can be bought online for about $40, which is nearly what I paid for the whole device. To get access to the RAM and processor, there are several screws on the base that need to be removed. And while we have the laptop flipped over, I removed the SATA 5400 RPM mechanical hard drive, which I will be replacing with an inexpensive solid state drive. I was following a tutorial, but I'll be honest it wasn't very clear which screws I needed to remove to get access to the CPU, so I simply removed most of them. Now we get our first look at the two RAM slots that were hidden under the palm rest. These 1GB sticks are clocked at 555MHz, and I'll be swapping them out for two 2GB 666MHz DDR2 RAM modules. Now the keyboard connector can be unclipped and we can finally see the heatsink covering the CPU and graphics chip. We are now very close, just a few more screws holding the top casing on. And after carefully moving the Wi-Fi antenna wires out of the way, I can flip the casing over. The heatsink and fan can now be removed. I'm very surprised to see there's next to no dust here. And after unplugging the fan and a bit of wiggling, we get our first look at the processor underneath. I did actually find a compatible CPU to put in here. It's a 2GHz Intel T5800 that came from the ASUS gaming laptop from 2008 I made a video on earlier this year. It's about a 15% faster CPU when compared to the one already in here, but it's literally all I had on such a short notice. Oh, and cleaning off the GPU die, it turns out it doesn't have the Nvidia Quadro 140M the seller mentioned. It only has very basic Intel GMA graphics. The Nvidia Quadro was only available on the higher tier models, which this laptop is not. Either way, I dusted off the board and internals, which, as I said, was surprisingly clean for a laptop used in a school for nearly 10 years. I'm really hoping the new processor I put in actually works, as it will be quite a bit of effort to switch it out. The thermal paste on the heatsink had definitely hardened over the years, so I made sure to clean off the surface using some isopropyl alcohol. It's always very satisfying to remove old paste. Maybe that's just me though. The one fan in the system was also completely dust free, incredibly rare to see on a system this old. I'm using Arctic MX4 thermal paste which is good value and performs pretty well. 
When the heat sink is pressed back on, that paste will spread thinly over the surface with no air bubbles in the middle. I also found one of those iconic red ThinkPad pointer nubs to go on the keyboard. I really do like using a pointing nub, but not for gaming of course. And replacing the old mechanical hard drive is a cheap BX500 solid state drive. This will make the system far more responsive and reduce load times quite a bit. With my fingers crossed, I was glad to see that the new processor was indeed working with this laptop. As for an operating system, I'm going to install Linux Mint, which should definitely be less resource intensive compared to Windows 10. And here we have the cleaned out and upgraded ThinkPad R61. The seller also forgot to mention that the BIOS was locked, so basically the whole laptop is now next to worthless if I was going to try and resell it. So let's try using this old Lenovo from 2008. First up, I tried connecting to my Minecraft server, which you can join yourself if you want. To get it even remotely playable, I had to lower the resolution to only 720x450. Even still, I was at best getting 20 frames per second. Running it at the native resolution was even worse. I really wish this had the Nvidia discrete graphics as it would improve the frame rate quite a bit. Older games such as Half-Life do run alright on here though, and it's good to see that quite a few games on the distribution platform called Steam are compatible with Linux. Another game I frequently try on old laptops is Terraria. While it's a fairly simple game, it was also too much for this laptop to handle sadly. One thing I love about Linux is that there is a huge repository of free applications. Super Tux Cart is a pretty good free piece of software as well. It nearly runs alright on here, but even with the settings set to low, it's a pretty choppy experience. Thankfully, if you want to use this for basic web browsing, it can get the job done. And if you want to type up documents, this has one of the best keyboards of any laptop I've ever used. The screen hinge can also bend back an impressive distance. And the overall build quality is very solid, something Lenovo have built a reputation for having. While there's no backlit keyboard, there is instead a much lower tech solution. A small yellow LED that shines down on the keyboard. This is very dim, not exactly that useful, but I'm glad the option is there. There are also heaps of ports on all sides of this device. Even today, this is a solid laptop for basic web browsing and document writing. Even though the seller totally scammed me, it turned out alright in the end. Well, there we have a $49 IBM ThinkPad off of eBay. You really take a bit of a gamble when you buy from less than reputable sellers. Either way, I hope you've had some fun and enjoyed the video regardless. So, stay tuned for more old laptop content in the near future. Take it easy, and I'll see you then.